this is the virus the whole world is trying to defeat. SARS coronavirus 2 is the cause of COVID-19, the respiratory disease that has triggered the worst crisis since World War II. A vaccine is one way of bringing the spread of the coronavirus pandemic to an end. Normally, it takes 10 to 15 years to develop a vaccine for Ebola. We did it in five years. I know we can accelerate that. We expect that to take 12 months to get depletion to actually a time where we could approve a vaccine. This is record time for the development of, of a vaccine. A vaccine is desperately needed, and scientists, politicians and businesses say they're doing everything possible to deliver it. This woman was the first person in the world to get an experimental COVID-19 shot in Seattle. She was part of a group of volunteers opening human testing just weeks into the fast-spreading epidemic. The World Health Organization says there are over 40 potential vaccines although only a handful are being clinically tested. The latest and most innovative way of attacking COVID-19 is with a vaccine that manipulates a part of the virus known as RNA. The coronavirus has a molecule called RNA which carries all its genetic information. The RNA can be synthesized on a large scale in the laboratory. This is why it's been used in this first vaccine, for which there are clinical trials on the way. Other vaccines are based on viral DNA or other viruses which have been weakened, which don't produce disease and in which we can include the genomic information of the COVID virus. Une information génomique du virus du COVID. There are over 30 companies and academic institutions worldwide trying different approaches to find the silver bullet to beat COVID-19. At CureVac, we see us as messengers of the new. In Germany, the biopharmaceutical company CureVac is using the so-called messenger molecule mRNA in a vaccine it believes will be ready for clinical tests in June. We use um, the mRNA um, to instruct the body um, to produce its own vaccine. So we only give an information into the body. So it's a totally um, new approach in medicine. CureVac made the front pages when a German newspaper reported that President Donald Trump had offered the company $1 billion to secure the vaccine exclusively for the United States. We asked for their version of events. We never received any offer from the White House um, or any other U.S. institution um, to buy our company or um, to make a reservation for uh, huge amounts of a vaccine for the U.S. And our aim is uh, to develop a, a vaccine for all people in, all over the world. Um, finally, the health politicians have to decide how to distribute um, such a vaccine. The European Union provides them up to The latest twist in this tale is that the president of the European Commission offered the CureVac 80 million euros in funding for research. While the world awaits for a vaccine, potentially millions of patients will need treatment. Researchers and doctors have started to test sometimes controversial combinations of existing drugs to treat those infected, but so far there's no cure. Here in Marseille, France, people with COVID-19-like symptoms are queuing up at the University Hospital Institute. It's offering to test and treat them. I prefer to be here rather than on my couch waiting for the symptoms to go away. The reason for the attention is Marseille microbiologist and head of the infectious disease department, Didier Raoul. He has convinced thousands, including the US president, that the cheap and easily produced malaria drug can treat COVID-19. This is why today everybody is talking about chloroquine and its related compound, hydroxychloroquine. However, many in the scientific community are critical and skeptical. 
I know that there's been a lot of talk in France and elsewhere about certain claims by certain researchers who claim that this drug works, this drug will save the world. But unfortunately, for the moment, the proof that this hydroxychloroquine medication is effective is extremely weak or even non-existent. Across the border in Italy, doctors at Milan's San Raffaele Hospital are using the same cocktail of drugs pushed by Professor Raoult in Marseille to treat their coronavirus patients. How do you decide on these therapies? Is there a nationally approved protocol? No, not on a national level. Nevertheless, IFA, the Italian medicines agency, has instructed us on a reasoned use of these drugs. So does this mean that every hospital can choose its own treatment? That's correct, even though, as I said, the drugs we are using are existing drugs. Could this pandemic have been avoided? Listen to Bill Gates in 2015. Today, the greatest risk of global catastrophe doesn't look like this. Instead, it looks like this. We have invested a huge amount in nuclear deterrence, but we've actually invested very little in a system to stop an epidemic. We're not ready for the next epidemic. The billionaire and philanthropist Bill Gates warned something like this was coming in the wake of two previous major coronavirus epidemics, SARS in 2003 and MERS in 2012. So why didn't the world listen? Prominent epidemiologists blame a system more focused on commercial opportunities than public health needs. You would think that they would have been prepared. I mean, all the countries for the last 10 years have been busy with epidemic preparedness scenarios, but they're still all over the place trying to find what to do. Previously, drills were carried out with a certain regularity to get ready for these events. This has come to a halt because the post-financial crisis years of austerity. Budget cuts were requested and money was saved in sectors that were thought not to be essential. What's happening could have been foreseen, but policies and decision-making went the opposite way. Today, every single life saved from the virus is a cause for celebration. When a cure and a vaccine are found, even this extraordinary pandemic will be history, hopefully with lessons learned.